Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Weekly Hope. I'm Kirsten Hagland, your host, and I'm really excited that you are joining us today. Um, while we wait for some people to log on and, uh, and tune into the broadcast, I'm just going to start by explaining a little bit about what we do here at Eating Disorder Hope and on this show at Weekly Hope. Um, whether you're coming back and you are a regular viewer or this is your first time, um, just to give you a little peek into what we do here. So um, Eating Disorder Hope is an online mental health resource hub. Um, we exist to provide you with education, resources, tools for recovery, um, you know, listings and options for treatment by state, by country, wherever you might be. Um, we just want to provide you the resources that you need on your recovery journey, wherever that might be. Um, and also, not only for you if you're the individual struggling, but also for family members, for friends who are looking for ways to support a loved one. Um, Eating Disorder Hope is just that resource hub to be, be there for you to provide the answers, the tools um, that you might need. So that's a little bit about who we are. You can find us online at eatingdisorderhope.com. Um, and we we also have a sister site, which is addictionhope.com, um, for those who might be struggling with addiction or other mental health issues as well. So that's a little bit about what we do. Um, this show, Weekly Hope, started in May of 2018, and we broadcast live every week on Facebook, usually on Wednesdays uh, around 12 noon, bringing on experts in the field of eating disorders and mental health from a wide variety of different fields, from clinicians and experts to advocates with their own recovery stories. Um, people who run nonprofits, just just from all different slices of the field to get their insight and perspective, to talk about specific topics and um, and hear what, what they're doing and also give you the opportunity to ask questions. And that's one of the things that is so awesome about this tool. Um, social media can be uh, a beast and it can be very, very difficult in a lot of ways, um, but it also can be a tool for good. And so we want to use this Facebook Live platform to be able to engage you in the conversation. So I just, and I'll say this throughout the broadcast, but I just want to emphasize that your voice matters and I want to encourage you to um, to comment, to ask questions, to say hello. I always love it when people say hello and let us know where they're signing in from because we do get people who watch the show from all over the world. Um, um, and so we always like to hear, hear where you are signing in from um, and let you uh, ask questions throughout the show. So it, it really is a, an incredible opportunity to have these guests here live to be able to answer your questions. And so I just want to encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity as you see fit. And also, if you're watching later on our YouTube channel, um, you can feel free to post a question in the comments as well, um, and we'll try to get back with you. We always go and monitor the comments, so that is a tool for you as well. So I um, just wanna make this as engaging as possible for you. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce our guest for this week, and we're gonna dive into our topic. I'm really excited, something we have not covered here yet on Weekly Hope, so we are thrilled to be able to welcome um, Jennifer to the show. So I'm gonna bring her on screen, and then I'm gonna read a little bit of her bio. There's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Kirsten. Hey, so, all right, so before we dive into our topic, I'm gonna um, read a little bit about you from our bio so our guests or our, our viewers know who you are. Um, Jennifer, oh, and I'm gonna mispronounce your last name, so please help me. Jennifer Kreatsoulis. Kreatsoulis, which is a wonderful Greek name, right? Yes, and I always make the disclaimer, I'm Greek by marriage. I didn't know how to say it either. <laughs> Kreatsoulis yes. uh, is a certified yoga therapist specializing in eating disorders and body image. She's an inspirational speaker and the author of Body Mindful Yoga, Create a Powerful and Affirming Relationship with your body and we are going to talk all about her book today as well. Jennifer provides yoga therapy via online and in person at Yoga Life Institute in Wayne, Pennsylvania. She leads yoga therapy groups at Montanito Eating Disorder Center of Philadelphia. She teaches workshops, retreats, and specialized trainings for clinicians, professionals, and yoga teachers and also mentors professionals who wish to integrate yoga into their work with eating disorder clients. Um, Jennifer is a partner with the Yoga and Body Image Coalition and writes for Yoga International and Yoga Journal and other influential blogs. And she wrote a really fabulous piece for eatingdisorderhope.com, which we're so thrilled. And uh, that's featured on our uh, Facebook page. We I just posted it earlier today again. So um, you can go and read more about this topic um, after you are done watching this video. So Jennifer, so great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, and you are joining us from today from Pennsylvania, right? Outside Philadelphia? That's correct, yes. 
Wonderful. I always love to get uh, a view of, of where our guests are signing in from. Obviously, as our viewers know, I'm here in Zurich in Switzerland. Um, so as you can see, Jennifer's sitting there in the daylight. I'm sitting here in the evening light. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we're uh, all we're all a little jealous, just so you know. <laughs> no, well, yes. Well, it's funny because the world is coming to Switzerland this week. It's Davos. It's the World Economic yeah. Forum. And uh, so it's, but that's three three and a half hours away by train so it doesn't really affect us here very much in Zurich um, but it is exciting to have the world spotlight on, on Switzerland at this moment um, but so Jennifer you're a yoga therapist and um, we're gonna talk all about the benefits of yoga and yoga therapy and eating disorder recovery today so I'd love to hear from you first how did you get involved in the field of eating disorder treatment and specifically as a yoga therapist so my involvement came through my personal experience as someone on a healing path from an eating disorder for over 20 years. After graduate school way back when, like 20 some years now, no, not 20 some years, but a long time. <laughs> I started um, practicing yoga. That's when I found yoga. Um, I didn't come to the practice necessarily as a way to you know, work on eating disorder recovery. I had had an eating dis um, exercise addiction and had kind of reached a point in my recovery where it was kind of safe to start introducing some movement again and some activity and, you know, millions of people in the country at that time, it was like the yoga boom, yoga was kind of cool. So I thought, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll try it out too. Um, and I came in um, to yoga that way, just through wanting to have an activity in my life again, some you know, a physical activity and just connect to that part of myself because I had been an athlete for so long. So that was kind of my way into yoga. Um, and, you know, from doing the practice, joining that community, learning some of the philosophies, having the embodiment experience of just learning to appreciate my body and respect my body really, really helped to deepen uh, my healing. And I really believe that it kept me well for a long time. Like, almost 15, 16 years, um, I was I was in a really strong recovery. Um, and then life changed and um, got married and had kids and finished graduate school and had a full-time job and kind of all these stressors came in, the overwhelm came in, yoga practice fell away. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a really severe relapse um, after my second daughter was born. Coming out of that relapse, though, was the gift of the realization of, you know, there's more that I'm meant to do with my life, and I don't know what that is. So I, I took steps to hire a coach, did that work, and lo and behold, Google landed me on the Yoga Life Institute website, reading about yoga, the yoga therapy program. And, you know, I remember just my whole body started shaking. It was just this visceral knowing, like, this is what I'm meant to do. You know, I had 20 some years experience of you know, recovery and the ups and downs and navigating all that. I had, you know, 15, 16 years of yoga experience. And now this was a way to kind of channel, you know, those experiences into learning something new related to yoga that, that I could then apply on a one-on-one -on -one basis and really help others. But I didn't go into it thinking I was going to be working with others in recovery. It just it never occurred to me, actually. Um, but it was through going through that process and working with mentors and kind of just getting really honest with myself that, yeah, no, this if I'm going to be an expert in anything, it's going to be this recovery thing. Right. So let's take all this professional training and and give it back to the world. That's incredible. And I was about uh, the um, certification process and what it takes to do what you do now. And it's, I mean, to be a, a certified yoga therapist is something like 800 hours. So, you know, yeah. I mean, that's an incredible amount of work that someone puts into developing um, this level of expertise. And I think that's important to emphasize because it's not just like, oh, if you're a yoga teacher, you do yoga therapy. It's a completely exactly. different modality. Exactly. I'm really grateful to you for kind of pointing that out and bringing this up. So yoga therapy is an emerging field. Um, it is it is growing. You know, people are getting trained all around the world. Um, we're seeing yoga therapy show up for many con health conditions. Um, but staying on track here with eating disorders. Yes. Yeah, so the training that I took was three years 
and it was over 800 hours. And we would meet for one week in a month and basically live together for one week in a month. Mm -hmm. And we would do this deep dive into a variety of um, learning topics, everything from biology and physiology and neurology to yoga philosophy and asana and breathing practices, meditation, you know, some of the more well-known yoga type practices, Um, learning about how to make these practices trauma sensitive and adaptable and accessible. Um, We did numerous case studies every year, like I think upwards of like 20 a year, working with case studies and then working with a mentor in the program to get feedback and support around working with individuals because yoga therapy is very different from a yoga class. Whereas Mm -hmm. a yoga class is a group setting, you know, you show up with your mat, you roll out your mat, you do the class, you follow along. This is, you know, one-on-one. It is applying the yoga philosophies and practices and tools of yoga to support the client in making changes that they want to make in their life. So it's, it's, it, you know, there's clinical skills that are needed. There's listening skills that are needed. Um, it, it blew me away, you know, just how much goes into having a supportive conversation with another human being and giving them the, the safety of space to work on themselves. Right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I have a dog in honor of you before our Facebook Live episode. <laughs> Wait, what's that? I did a downward dog in honor of you. Yay! <laughs> um, today, because I I went to a um oh just I went to a workout class this morning and I was sore, and so I was like, mm, we're talking about yoga. I do a downward dog, and it was so amazing. Um, yeah. I, I love yoga and Jennifer you and I have talked about this as someone who's a former dancer also um, had the a similar journey as you that really wanted to start to incorporate movement into recovery and and was very in tune with my body the mind body connection and um, but also wanted to do it in a respectful way in a way that was healthy and start incorporating movement and exercise back in um, and I know that that's something that I mean we all we all share um, even if we weren't like an athlete or a dancer, um, it feels good to be our body. And also I think that um, the, the diet community and the anti-obesity community um, often looks at the eating disorder world as like, well, you're just okay with people being fat or mm-hmm. a ridiculous chart. Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, people need to really exercise and they need to be intense and, you know, all of these very, very intense workouts, you know, that's what we need to kick our butts into shape kind of thing, you know, that mentality and that attitude. Um, But eating disorder recovery and the whole recovery process is about learning how to treat your body well in moderation. It's not saying, well, no, we don't want to work out or no one should ever work out or, you know, anything like that. It's about doing it in a moderate and balanced way. Um, and I'd love for you to talk a little bit about the benefits of yoga specifically, um, especially as compared to other forms of exercise in the recovery process. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are many, many benefits, and they kind of hit all levels of our human existence. So kind of that was a big statement, but if we kind of break it down to, you know, our physical bodies, right? The movement aspect of yoga, right? And movement is just one aspect of yoga. You know, we kind of have this understanding. We think of yoga as, you know, going to a yoga studio and doing yoga poses. And and that is true. Um, But in the broader, you know, or more true classical sense of yoga um, and what, what I do in yoga therapy is movement is just one piece of it. So I just want to kind of clarify that right so but on a physical on a physical level right yoga offers an opportunity for us certainly to strengthen our bodies right to take care of our bodies to to move them and to give them that activity that they need for just overall wellness you know we think about like wellness of the spine for example right you know just just general wellness um but when we combine that with, say, for example, moving and paying attention to how we're breathing, right? 
now something different is going on because that maybe impulse to like push, 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 we can rein that in a little bit and now have a different experience of like, oh, so what does it feel like when I lift my arms and I breathe in and I lower my arms and I breathe out? Now I'm paying attention differently, right? I'm not thinking about, you know, am I burning up this, that, or the other thing that I ate, right? Or am I like working out, you know, we're thinking about more of those like kind of parameters that can be put on a workout when we're kind of in the thick of our illness. This is a different experience. This is about can learning how to move mindfully, learning how to pay attention to sensation, right? Coming out of, you know, um, an eating disorder is really like returning back to our senses, right? We've numbed out, you know, we've desensitized ourselves. Um, and so, you know, yoga, the movement can help us ease back into sensation in a safe way. You know, and so it's like, oh, I just did that down dog. And wait, is that like a feeling in my hamstring? Like, okay, now I'm noticing my hamstring, but I'm noticing it in a different way than if it was about like jamming out on the Stairmaster, right? <laughs> like for the self destructive reasons. This is, you know, so when we come to these poses from the mindset that is not of self destruction, right? Because there is, there is, there can be that tendency to use yoga to that ends, right? Um, and that's kind of the danger of some of our yoga classes that exist out in the world um, for those who are in recovery, that there can be a very like fitness oriented um, feeling to them. And that's no judgment to those types of classes. It's just that for people in recovery, they're probably not the best environment, at least to get started in, right? Because they're probably going to just kind of feed some of those old tapes, right? Yeah. So finding classes and teachers who, you know, um, maybe have like a training in like trauma sensitivity, you know, where they're going to teach from a perspective that is really emphasizing safety and using language very wisely. Um, going to studios that maybe don't have mirrors. And I know that's a big ask, that's hard to find, but you know, the mirrors are there mostly to help us pay attention to our alignment, but for someone in recovery or someone who's struggling with body image, the mirror can really be a disruption to um, having an, even an opportunity to connect inward and have a different kind of body experience, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, staying out of like rooms that are heated or super like fast paced classes, um, they're gonna kind of, they might stir up some of that old eating disorder stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Well, um, and I'm just going to ask you a question real quick. Are you having trouble with my audio on your end by any chance? My what? Am I? Are you having trouble with my audio by any chance? Am I I'm just you're getting a little fuzzy right now? But this was the first that that okay. happened. Okay, I just wanted to check. And if you guys who are watching, if there's anything happening funny with my audio, just let me know because every once in a while I'll start hearing an echo of myself. And uh, <laughs> don't need to hear an echo of myself. So just. Yeah. Let me know. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know what, it's, um, it's so cool. I'll never forget the transformation that started to happen in my mind and mind body awareness. Um, when I first started practicing yoga, um, I, I think I was like, I was either in like triangle pose or I was in downward dog and the teacher said something about thinking about the pressure in my hands, in my mm -hmm. fingertips. And in my toes, and I was like, <laughs> I've never thought about. I was just thinking about the stretch, and this, you know, and like, I don't know, or, or I didn't even know if I was thinking. But all of a sudden, I was like, oh my gosh, I can feel pressure in my hands and the mat, and oh my gosh, okay, now that changes things. If I like put more pressure into my baby toes, I'm like this is crazy, and it was just so cool to see like just when you shift your awareness, just what happens. Um, and, and also then breathing. And, uh, and I'm sure that that's something that is really, and we're going to talk about how you work with clients specifically, but I'm sure that that's also like a huge, huge benefit. One that you see when you work yeah. with clients, is like teaching them how to actually breathe and breathe through movement because we just go around all day. We just don't even think about breathing. No, absolutely. It's not like we're not trained to breathe correctly. Yeah. 
And, like, as we, and as we get older, as we get older and more, you know, aware of the social messages around how bodies should look, all of a sudden now taking an inhale and letting our centers kind of fill up, it's like taboo, right? So yeah. we learn to breathe up here to compensate for that, right? And then add on just the general like anxiety that people might be carrying with them in their day-to-day -day lives and that anxiety kind of like keeps people breathing up here if you know or even shorter breaths right and that that you know the long-term effect of that on the nervous system is, is yeah. real yeah. right yeah. um and the short term too you know because if our nervous system is always jacked up, then we're always thinking that the tiger is around the corner ready to get us, right? And in our case, we're talking about an eating disorder, <laughs> right? Um, you know, so learning to just kind of turn to our bodies to help calm our minds, right? This yeah, is a huge yeah. paradigm shift for recovery because for so long, right, our bodies are the things we're trying to escape trying to shrink we're trying to vanish we're trying to you know beat up or whatever the kind of the, the inner dialogue is around that and now through yoga and other types of kind of reflective practices if we can realize like oh i can turn to my body to help myself calm down like i can use my breath to help my body and my mind calm down i mean this is like i said it's a whole paradigm shift yeah, it's amazing. Um, I want to ask you a question. So um, for people who might be watching on this now or either later and they think, well, okay, I've heard that yoga is like has to do with spirituality or religion, Hinduism. Um, you know, my faith doesn't align with that or I'm not a spiritual person at all. That doesn't work for me or I don't want to. I don't want to go into a place where there's chanting and, you know, if people like mm -hmm. that, um, can you help? explain what yoga really is and help clarify or demystify um, the assumption that people might have that it's a religious thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yoga is not a religion. It's not a religion. I mean, that's just, that's the simple fact. It's not yeah. a religion, yeah. right? Um, I, for myself, I call it a spiritual practice because for me, spirituality means that kind of inward journey that of, of you know, building inner resources, building and using virtues like patience and perseverance and courage and bravery and, you know, those types of, you know, energies and, and qualities, right? And so my yoga practice helps me to access those and build those up in myself and then be a better person in the world because of that, mm -hmm. right? So for me, that's what spirituality is for me, but someone else can define it differently, right? So it's not a religion. It can be spiritual, depending on how you define it. But it's it's pra it's a it's a variety of practices to help us just connect with ourselves, right? And depending on what you want to get out of that, it could be you want to reduce your stress, you want to reduce your anxiety, you want to improve your mood, you want to bring some you know movement into your body, you want tools to help calm your mind. Right. Maybe you want some new philosophies or teachings to help give you some new perspectives and challenge some core beliefs that are getting in the way. Right. So you can look at it very like, very like, OK, this is what I need. How can you give it to me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and thank you for, for clarifying that. And also, I think it's just an interesting because you mentioned about this is how, you know, it is provides a spiritual foundation for me. And it just made me think, um, you know, and I often describe it this way because to me it makes sense. Um, when I was in my eating disorder, my eating disorder was my religion. Definitely. Like it sets Definitely. up the rules, it sets up yes. the commandments, it, yes. it it offers you then ways of atonement, it has yes. punishment and guilt associated with it. It was like a religion. Yeah. And it's you. interesting that um, everything to me is in a way spiritual um, because if it has to do with um, our where I've said our sense of self-worth comes from what our values are questioning what our values are like everything can be spiritual So it's not something that we have to be afraid of um, but Is to be engaged. It's a part of who we are. We're a mind a body and a spirit um, exactly. exactly, and I'll tell you I'll be honest. I'm not a chanter 
that's not up my alley. It's just not, doesn't resonate with me. So, yeah, you know, so, yeah. yeah, so that doesn't even have to be a part of it. I mean, I don't even think that really goes on in too many of the regular kind of mainstream type of yoga studios. So, yeah. Um, yeah. and yeah, yeah. So I think there's a lot of ways that we can apply yoga in our lives mm -hmm. um, to help us just be more whole. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, when we are, you know, in our eating disorders, um, when we are really attached to an identity, you know, bound by a diagnosis, right? We just become so fragmented because that's the lens through which we see ourselves. Right. Um, and yoga, like one of the most core philosophies, is that we are already whole. Mm -hmm. We are already whole. We are not broken. We do not need to be fixed. Right. And so when I sit down with my clients, you know, that's the lens that I'm looking at every single person. Like you're whole. I'm not here to fix you. You don't even need me to be fixed. Right? I'm just here to hold space for you to kind of find some answers that you're searching for. Yeah. To help create the changes and maintain those changes. Right. And let's. OK, so you've identified this is what you want to work on. All right. So let's create some practices to help support you in that. And let's look at some of the beliefs that maybe are getting in the way. And how can we bring in a yoga philosophy to, to support you on that path? Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, so just this idea that we're already whole, you know, for me personally in my healing, that was the biggest life changing. When I could take that truth in, it changed everything, right? Because I, I believed that I had this monster inside of me you know, that there, I was carrying this, this ugliness inside of me. Right. And so, you know, there was this voice and then there was me, or there was this diagnosis and then there was me, or I'm just an eating disorder. I'm not a human, like all this fragmentation. And when I learned that I'm whole and I took that in and I really believed it and now practice it, what that means is that my, the eating disorder is a teacher. It's not a monster. It's a teacher, right? It's something that I can learn from about myself. It's not separate from me. It's a part of me. It informs a lot of my life and how I view the world. Thank God, because I've learned so much, yeah. right? But if I continued down that path of like, there, I'm harboring some type of monster inside of me or yeah. my, my identity is only as, you know, it's just a diagnosis, well, it's really hard. It's really hard to heal when that's the belief system, right? We can do all the treatment, right? We can eat our meals. We can go to our appointments. We can, you know, make it all look nice on the outside and do our work. But if we're still walking around believing that we're not whole, that we are just an eating disorder, right? It's really hard to then heal. Yeah. It's such a good message. Yeah, that you shared that, and that you're right. That is a completely different way that yoga views the body and views the person, and that that fragmentation is so. Just yeah. um, so um, we are. I just want to let everyone know too. We're going to be wrapping up in the next couple of minutes. So um, I saw some new people come on. So if you have a question for Jennifer or something that you want to share, um, please let's get it in now and make sure that we can get them to her before she has to and has to jump off here. Um, so Jennifer, tell us a little bit about your book. And about your practice because you do this for people. You do this, and and they don't have to be in Pennsylvania. They can really be anywhere in the world, right? Yes, that's right. Um, yeah. So my, I work with clients one on one, like you mentioned, um, in person here at Yoga Life Institute, right outside Philadelphia, um, or online. And the sessions are very organic. You know, it's really about what you want to work on in your recovery. Um, I see myself as a part of the outpatient team. So yoga therapy is a supplement to therapy, working with a dietitian, maybe a psychiatrist, you know, especially in early recovery when we need, we need that team in place. So I like to think of it as, you know, you're going to your therapist and shit's getting stirred up, <laughs> then you can come to me and we can be like, okay, so 
what are some practices, whether that's poses, breathing, mantra, meditation, visualization, maybe you're an artist, we bring in your art, maybe you are a religious person, we bring in your faith, whatever it is that helps you connect to your highest, wholest self. Um, what are some practices that we can create to support you as you're navigating the, the discomfort of having to add those extra, you know, this or that to your meal plan or the discomfort of this new realization that's come out in therapy or this core belief that you've been tackling? How can we look at it from a different angle um, with some yoga philosophy and then build some type of tool that you do during the week in between our sessions. So cool. we always end with some type of smart goal because that's where the magic happens when we start integrating, wiring in new ways of thinking and practicing in our lives, right? So it's it's a practice. It's ongoing, this work that we do um, in yoga therapy. Awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, so I just want to know that I put the link to Jennifer's website in the comments below so that you can learn more about um, the work that she does with private clients um, and, and send her an inquiry, send her an email, reach out. This is something that really lights your fire and you're like, oh, this would be such an incredible supplement for me. And I just also want to do it online with people as well, that they can do yes. it over Skype. I do it over Skype or Google Hangouts. Um, I have people all over um, the United States and I'm now working with clients in Europe. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, very, yeah. very awesome. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah, so make sure you check out Yoga for Eating Disorders. The link is right there in the comments if you wanna find out more about that. And then also, um, please tell us where we can direct people to uh, get your book. Yes, so I have it right here, woo! <laughs> Um, it's called Body Mindful Yoga, and you can find that on Amazon. You can find it on Barnes & Noble. Um, I hear Target is selling it, Target.com. Um, oh, and my gosh, Jennifer. Yes. And that is like... <laughs> Yay! You so, can get it at Target. Yeah, that is yeah, my real Target, Target here in Switzerland, I will say. That was the first thing when I went back to the United States in November for Thanksgiving. I said, I got to go to Target. I have to go. <laughs> So. I don't know. I don't know how we lived without Target and cell phones. You know, like when I was younger, I'm like, how did we do that? <laughs> yeah, hashtag first world problems. I have no idea. I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. So this this book is, you know, looking at yoga and body image. So it's um, definitely if you're in recovery, it's it's very applicable. Um, it's that specific to eating disorder recovery, if that makes sense, but the body image piece and some of the beliefs that would drive that and relate to eating disorder is definitely, definitely there. Amazing. Wonderful. Well, I put the link on the Amazon, like in the comments as well. And thank I see the book version too. So yeah, thank you. Um, that's really, really great. Um, Jennifer, just one last, um, thing that, uh, I'd love for you to leave us with is if someone is watching this and they're in a super dark place, um, and especially if they're in that place where they feel like they've been trying this recovery thing for a while and it's just like, it's too hard, not yeah. working. Um, every day feels like a slog. Um, especially as someone who has been through this journey, uh, mm -hmm. as well as through relapse, what words of hope or inspiration can you give to them? I wanna just, first of all, validate that struggle. I wanna validate that, that that is, that is a very real part of the process. Um, and you're not alone in that. Um, and I also wanna validate that it can get better. I wanna validate that healing is truly real and it's very possible. And to just trust, just trust. And if you've reached this point where you've kind of like, you know, what I call like the point of no return, where you just know deep down that you can't pull yourself out of this on your own, that there's no shame in that, you know, that it's not a going backwards, it's information, and that you can trust that information. And I wanna really support you and encourage you to reach out to a support, um, explore what are your options to, to help guide you out of the darkness, right? That you don't have to stay in it. Right? Amazing. Right? Yeah. And it's not going backwards. It's all forward motion. Amen. We can't go back in time, right? We can only go forward. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And you're worthy. You deserve, you deserve, deserve to be well. 
deserve to enjoy your life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, Jennifer, thank you so much. This was thank a you. Really nice conversation. And thank you for the great work that you do. And I'm so happy to, to have heard your story and mm -hmm. how you found the community in your work. And now you're using that to pour back into the lives of other people. It's just really, really wonderful. So oh. thank you so, so much. Thank you for the work you do too, Kirsten. We, we really appreciate you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's my joy. Thanks, Jennifer. All right. All right, guys, just want to say thank you so much for watching. Um, really hope that that was inspirational for you. I know it was for me. And I was like, as we were going through that conversation, reminding myself to breathe as well. So I hope wherever you are in the world that you, um, if you got nothing else, that you were reminded to breathe, <laughs> to think about breathing. Um, but just want to say thank you for your presence here. And if you found this meaningful or um it seems like something that would be really helpful to a friend or a family member or a loved one who might be struggling, please feel free to share um, this video with them and uh, and also any of their resources or links that I posted in the comments below um, of Jennifer's uh, book, Body Mindful Yoga, um, of her, her practice and work with individual clients um, at Yoga for Eating Disorders. Um, feel free to check those out and, and use them and share them. So, all right, wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a beautiful, blessed rest of your day. Um, and we will see you next Wednesday for another episode of Weekly Hope at 12 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Um, stay tuned to our social media feeds for that guest and topic. And we'll look forward to seeing you then. All right, bye.